Ask God to help you see if part of your lingering resentment might stem from your own insecurities, fear, or anger from wounds of the past. This is kind of hard and requires a lot of like introspection on your part to kind of think about this. I shared last week that sometimes my husband can be kind of controlling and I can start to resent him for being, seeming like he's being so controlling. So for me, I'm realizing my part in this, like what, what are my insecurities, my fears, my past wounds that would make this become such a resentment, like such a poke to me, like why, why is this um, such a big deal for me? And, and here's what I realized, because I couldn't have any control over um, what, you know, being sexually abused when I was a kid and the things that happened to me when I was really young, I'm super hyper sensitive to anyone who even remotely controls me now, or, or I think is trying to control me now. And once I realized that by doing this very exercise, it's like, oh, I could actually step back and say, okay, I, I'm hypersensitive about anyone that might be trying to control me. And I could actually see that half the time, Raul isn't even trying to control me, maybe sometimes. But other times, it's because I'm just super hypersensitive to the possibility that someone might be trying to control me. So like if he would just say, you know, is it time to make another pot of coffee? I'd be like, he's trying to control me. You know, it's like, I mean, it, it, it would just be like, but see, it was magnified for me because of my own past insecurities, wounds, or fear. So this is where we look at our own stuff. So let's, let's just review. So we learned that sometimes our resentment gets extra triggered. We're like super hyper triggered because of our own stuff, insecurities, fear, emotional wounds from the past. And that sometimes, often actually, Satan comes in and lies to us about those past wounds, right? And, and, it's, and it's a lie that we have to realize, that we have to pause and go, is this thought correct? This assumption that's been whispered to me, is this correct? Because uh, often Satan's kind of trying to get you to assume the motivation of this person, why they did what they did, and all this kind of stuff, and, or that you won't be able to handle it, or it'll always be like this, or it'll never get better, or you can't have boundaries, or whatever lie he's trying to tell you. And you have to decide, is this true or is this a lie? And again, the way you determine truth is you get in the Word of God, and then you're better aware of what is true and what is a lie. Okay, but the next step, and this is a hard one as well. All this stuff is hard because it takes a lot of introspection where you're really honest with yourself, but ask God if there is anything you may have done that contributed to the situation that caused you to resent your husband or this other person. Now, this sometimes this is not the case. Sometimes you did not play any role in the thing that caused the resentment, especially if it's something that happened to you as a child when you were really, really young. But if it's something more current day, like in your marriage, sometimes, sometimes you may have played a small role in the situation that caused you to resent that person. For example, did you put your kids before your husband, prompting him to look for female attention elsewhere? Now, it would not be your fault if he went out and had an affair, but I'm just saying, sometimes we need to take a look at our own part. Is there a little part that we might have played in the situation that ended up causing you to resent that person? Does that make sense? Um, did you avoid confronting your husband on troubling issues out of a fear of conflict? See how then you have all this resentment, but maybe it's your own thing, like this is me, because I have a fear of conflict, and so if I let things build and build and build and all this resentment, but is my part in this, the part that I need to own, that I have a fear of conflict, so I let things go away too long before I said something. Um, did you consistently insist on doing things your way instead of showing respect for your husband's opinion? And then he got all angry, and then you're resentful, but he's angry, and it's like, oh, but maybe you need to look at your piece. Is there a piece that you might have played in this? If it's your mother you resent, because she's always making you feel guilty that you're not seeing her enough, or calling her enough, or doing enough for her, or whatever. Have you contributed to that by neglecting to have any boundaries with her? So she's just assumed that you're at her beck and call, and, and then you're all angry with her and, and resentful, but maybe you have neglected having boundaries. So again, it's important to realize that God may have many things he's trying to teach you in this process too. That it's not all the other person, that maybe God wants to teach you something as well. So look at each resentment on your list. Ask God to show you if there are ways you may have contributed to the problem or if there's something that he wants you to, to learn 
through this experience. But the last point is after weighing all that we've learned tonight about our own imperfections, fears, wrong beliefs, is there still a significant issue that you truly need to air out with your husband or current person that you have resentment against? If you've been sweeping this under the rug, that is not a great strategy, right? Because the resentment just keeps on growing. Ask God to help you see if this issue or your behavior is so, or the issue or behavior is so harmful or destructive to your marriage or family that you need to confront your husband and ask him to make a specific change or whether your husband or this person is just imperfect, just like you. So this is where you ask God, is this such a big deal? Is this so harmful or destructive? that I need to, you know, sit down with this person and have this conversation asking for a specific change, or is this just that your husband or this other person is imperfect just like you? Don't fall into the trap of thinking that your husband can be perfect. I'm always, I still to this day, no lie, am so startled when Raul does something less than perfect. I'm always like, <laughs> he is a pastor. I can't believe this. And then it's like God just slaps you upside the head and says, and you thought he would be perfect? You know, Jesus is the only one perfect. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay, but, but I mean, we just like subconsciously, we expect Christians especially, you know, to be perfect. Well, that is an impossible thing to live up to. Now, if they're way out of bounds, sinning, doing something destructive and harmful, then yes, ask for a specific change. But if they're simply being imperfect, how about if we let them off the hook because we're also imperfect? Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, yeah. And how about if we leave the past stuff in the past and forgive them just like we hope that God will forgive us for our past mistakes, right?